Elbit uh, Systems is a global defense and aerospace electronics company, uh, about $3 billion, uh, headquartered in Israel. Uh, is really uh, covering the entire portfolio of defense and aerospace electronics. Uh, all the way from uh, communications, command control, airborne systems, land systems, UAVs, uh, electronic warfare, and such. It's a very diverse business, a uh, technology leader in many of those areas. Uh, my business is the U.S. Uh, subsidiary and arm of Elbit that is headquartered in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, we have about 2,000 people, 2,000 employees in uh, five major geographical locations in the U.S including uh, New Hampshire, Florida, Virginia, Alabama, Texas, and a few other smaller facilities. And our mission is basically to take the technologies that uh, Elbit develops and bring them to the U.S. to provide uh, solutions for critical missions and needs. We operate in the U.S. in defense, in commercial aviation, and also business, nice business and medical instruments. The um, Elbit Systems is pretty unique because if you look at many of the uh, defense corporations in the world, you will see that most of their sales are for domestic needs. Most of them have uh, about 10% or even less international sales. Elbit actually has the reverse uh, ratio. Elbit's 80% of Elbit sales are done internationally outside of Israel, and that makes it for a unique challenge and structure as a global company. So the strategy that the company has selected is to be a multi-domestic company. That means that the company is operating in multiple uh, countries, opening facilities, opening domestic capabilities, which allows it to really grow and, and, and do this international sales. Uh, uniquely, uh, U.S. is considered by Elbit as a domestic home market. And that means that uh, about 50% of the Elbit sales, if you look at Israel and the U.S., those comprise more than 50% of Elbit, Elbit sales. And being domestic home market means that we invest in infrastructure, we invest in capabilities, we hire more people, and we also follow the national security interest of the United States uh, as, a, as a home market player. Uh, so that, that is really the, the core strategy of being global and multi-domestic. Well, we're looking at that. I think, I think that, that definitely everybody is looking ahead at, uh, at uh, uh, some changes in budgets, of course, but more than that, a lot of shifting in priorities for defense uh, budgets around the world. But one of the unique things about Elbit is because of our global footprint, we find a significant business, business in supporting the U.S. industry in growing internationally. We are working with several of the leading U.S. companies to help them penetrate and expand their business internationally based on our experience and our presence in this country. So that's one, one of the areas we do. We, of course, are looking at adjacent markets as well. Uh, the, 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 I think the big challenge is going into a market in which you're not as familiar with the customers and the needs and the trends. Uh, we've had some very good experiences of dual-use technology. We intend to continue to do that. Uh, interestingly enough, one of my businesses here in the U.S., the medical instrument business last year, has done very well. And we see a capability to grow that with uh, increased emphasis on health and on, on those kind of capabilities. In a commercial aviation market, we're looking for some rebounding of the market in the next few years. So that will be hopefully an area in which we can grow more. So we're looking both at the global capability, but also from a perspective of some dual use and some capability we can leverage into medical instruments and commercial aviation. Yeah, I think, I think the dual use, um, again, one of the big challenges, I think one of the success stories uh, that Elbit had in the last few years is taking technology that they developed for military, for helmet mounted displays, for tracking uh, of head movement. The pilots use that to steer sensors or to steer weapons on a tactical fighter. Elbit took the same technology and basically spun off a company that was later acquired, but it took the same technology for medical implementation. And this, this is about identifying in the body to a great accuracy the position, the location, the orientation of probes or any medical devices. So that's an example. Uh, there are other areas in which we are looking at in the area of satellite communications and in, in other areas to be able to leverage uh, defense technologies into the commercial. And of course, nowadays the big trend is 
to do exactly the other way, which is taking commercial technologies into the realm of, uh, of uh, military. And I think one of the premier examples is taking all the effort that was done on man-machine interface in the commercial industry with iPhone and so forth, and you can see these kind of applications showing up in the military systems as well. I think the, uh, the biggest challenge uh, is really to look ahead and understand where our customers needs are going to be, where the priorities are going to be, how are we going to spend precious R&D dollars to stay ahead and to, pre to create a value proposition for the customers. We're seeing more and more of the customers, at least in the defense industry, wanting to see hardware products developed, demonstrated before they're willing to make a buy decision. They're less willing to go into a longer term research and development effort. So we have to be very uh, capable, very strong in anticipating their needs, spending R&D to develop the products and hoping that it will be the ones that are going to meet their uh, future needs and future solutions. That, that is one of the biggest challenges we have. Um, I, think, I think from our company, uh, one of the things that's pretty unique about us is we're looking at uh, business models which are collaborative in nature. Uh, we have a great uh, asset in the fact that uh, in Israel there's a whole lot of innovation, a whole lot of new ideas and technologies. And uh, one of the things that we have built is a very unique business model that allows us to bring those innovations to the U.S., customize them and adapt them to U.S. needs. And we do this through a collaborative business model, through a joint ownership model between the folks in the U.S. and the folks in Israel. And I think as we look at the future for the U.S., I think more and more we will rely on collaboration, international collaboration, and innovation that doesn't necessarily come from the U.S., but we as Americans are able to leverage it to our advantage. So I think that's one of the core things that we think we're good at and we see in the future.